Sergio will make some remarks and we'll take a few questions. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your presence. I usually come before you to express deep concerns about unfolding developments and trends around the world. Today, a bit of good news. I want to address a promising development for global peace and security. The world is closely watching what will take place in Singapore in a few hours' time. And I commend the leaders of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and the United States for pursuing a diplomatic solution. And I also thank all those who contributed to creating the conditions for this key moment. The two leaders are seeking to break out of the dangerous cycle that created so much concern last year. Peace and verifiable denuclearization must remain the clear and shared goals. As I wrote to both leaders last month, the road ahead will require cooperation, compromise, and a common cause. There will be inevitably ups and downs, moments of disagreement, and tough negotiations. Relevant parts of the United Nations system stand ready to support this process in any way, including verification if requested by the key parties. They are the protagonists. But the International Atomic Energy Agency has a mandate to apply safeguards on all nuclear material in peaceful use, including all material removed from military programs. And the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization could also play an important role in monitoring the DPRK's announced moratorium on nuclear explosive tests. The Security Council has consistently underlined its desire for a peaceful, diplomatic, and political solution to the situation, as well as urging further work to reduce tensions. And I particularly welcome the trust building and momentum on the inter-Korean track, as evidenced by the recent Panmunjom Declaration. Going forward, I urge attention to the humanitarian situation in the DPRK, where we are seeking 111 million US dollars to meet the immediate needs of 6 million of the most vulnerable people. Dead people of the DPRK need our generosity and help. And it is also important that diplomatic processes pave the way for progress on human rights issues, from family reunions to engagement with international mechanisms. In closing, I hope all parties will seize this opportunity to support a peaceful, prosperous, secure, and verifiable denuclearized Korean Peninsula. Let us build on this positive momentum for the people of the Korean Peninsula and the wider world. Thank you very much. Uh, Michelle. Thank you, General. Um, you've mentioned verif verifiable a couple of times. Um, have you said no request has been made yet by the parties? But have you had any informal discussions with maybe the Americans about what role the UN could play when it comes to verifying? We are here to support. As I said, we are not the protagonists. The protagonists are the parties. But we are here to support whatever the uh, UN agencies and mechanisms or related to the UN can do will be at the disposal of the parties. But as I said, our objective is not to play a role. Our objective is the success of these negotiations, and we are here to support whatever will be required by them. And could I just ask you a quick question on Yemen? Yes. Um, there's been some reports that the UAE has warned the UN that NA groups to leave Yemen within three days. What can you tell us about this? There are, at the present moment, intense uh, uh, negotiations. Uh, Martin Griffith is shuttling uh, between uh, Sana and uh, uh, both the, the UAE and uh, Saudi Arabia uh, to hope that there will be a way to avoid the military confrontation in Odaida. Uh, it's we are at, at the present moment uh, in intense consultation. There is a lull in the fighting to allow for them, and I hope that uh, it will be possible to avoid a battle for Odeida. Did you Great, thank you, Michelle. Warning? Sorry? Did you receive this three day warning from Did the Emiratis? Receive a three day warning from the Emiratis. Uh, uh, what I say is that there was a lull, as I said, to allow for uh, discussions, and I hope that that will allow us to avoid a battle.
comes to the credit for the summit, I mean, who, what kind of credit do you feel the pres President Trump deserves? What kind of credit, credit do you think the what, what, kind of what kind of credit do you think the Security Council deserves in bringing this all to forward to the summit? I believe that this summit uh, is an extremely important event. I believe the two leaders need to be credited for the courage with which they decided to move forward with the summit and to engage uh, in a constructive negotiation to reach an objective that is vital for us all, the peaceful and verifiable denuclearization of uh, uh, North Korea. So I do believe that uh, uh, this is a very positive fact, and I congratulate the two leaders for the courage that they have shown. Thank you. Uh, Italian. Secretary General, do you have any comment on the decision by the Italian Minister of Interior of, to shut the port of, uh, to the migrants' boat? I have always been uh, extremely concerned with the fact that the space uh, for uh, refugee protection in Europe might be shrinking. And my strong appeal is that uh, recognizing that countries have the right to manage their borders, uh, and countries have the right to define their own migration policies. Countries should do it in a protection-sensitive way, and countries should do it in full respect for international refugee law. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.